Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Terror Battle 2. Today we're talking about co-op play, the Infernal Keep and Raid mode, and just some little tips and tricks that might help you get up those ranks to get better loot, better rewards, and also take down bosses quicker to potentially get the speed bonuses. Some of these are things that are just little bits that make a massive difference. And also we're going to be talking about some of the best figures to be taking into these battles. So let's get into it. Now I want to say a big shout out to Neo Falcon. This is where some of this information comes from. He's going to done a really nice, comprehensive, um, detailed review on some of the best ways of taking down the boss. This guy has 482 cold medals already, so he's been grinding hard. So the first rule is a very basic one. It's obviously in this moving phase. Did you see how shiny moved over somebody? Do not do that. If you overlap players, and what will happen is your character will get pushed out. So when positioning your characters, make sure to put them in a position that doesn't overlap with any of your teammates. If you see somebody overlap you, try and pull you. So here we're gonna see Dark Thing. Loads of people overlapped us, and we've just got pushed out of the combo, making it a smaller combo, and doing less damage to the enemy. So if you see somebody do this, and they're doing it to you, pull your character out and maybe position them in a place where you're still gonna be connected and doing damage and just try not to overlap your enemies. Next up, let's talk about phases. So, phase one. The enemy will alternate between horizontal and vertical attacks. So here it does a searing beam attack and it's in a vertical direction. So the attack's gonna come in a horizontal direction so everybody position them very nicely on the opposite sides to that and don't get hit by the searing beam. That means on the next attack we need to be positioning ourselves along the side. The next phase two starts at 50% HP of the boss. Here he will oh, it'll do exactly the same as before, however he will repeat whatever he just did. So as we saw then, he did a horizontal attack. So this next attack will be a horizontal attack again. There's a lot of people going in a vertical position, probably because they're gonna take him out straight away. <laughs> They've taken him out straight away. People are killing this guy too quickly now. Uh, but what he does is just copies the same attack as before. So just position yourself in the same position as you did next last time when it comes to 50%. And also you can shout out using the messages system, using um, aim for a vertical chain or horizontal chain to help teammates out. Finally, there is phase three, which happens when the enemy has less than 25% of its health left. In phase three, it gets a lot of buffs, including defense and magic defense, and it also starts charging up a big attack that will one-shot some people. You should just ignore the one-shot attack and just chain the boss in the same way that you did before, hoping to finish off the boss and deal enough damage to take out in that phase. Next, let's talk about what units to bring with you. One of the best units at the moment people are talking about is King Orbling. Now you can pick him up in chapter two very easily. If you start the chapter from go from the world map, you can then take out the three King Orblings behind you very easily when they have about a 25% drop rate. And once you've got him, you can just build him up to level 40 plus and King Orblin has a magic attack that is plus 10% to the chain. What this means is it's ridiculously OP for raids because he gives 10% magic attack to every character in the entire chain for each pincer. So with two King Orblings and five pincers, you give a plus 100% magic attack to the entire chain for two turns. If you can steady pincer for five, that is pretty difficult. And that's a constant plus 200% magic attack just from the two you bring. So there you can see with the two people I've taken in, which is the Leviathan and my Xena, who's 99, level 99, and they, what, I finished ninth, so a D rank. What I want to be able to do is to get a high rank, and you see this guy who's taken in King Orblin and the Leviathan, who also has plus 10% magic attack, I believe. Um, he, they, they, the two give you a massive, massive damage, which gives you a good SS rating and helps you to pick up better rewards. Finally, let's talk about co-op rewards. There you can see I've got a co-op medal and that's based on your rating bonus. So the, the higher you rank, 
you will actually get more medals based on that. The next is the speed bonus. For completing the boss within two and a half minutes, you'll get a zapper that can be used for boosting up your weapons, giving them experience. And the clear reward is mighty, who which you can get uh, boosts to your experience of your character levels. Finally, you can also pick up the rewards such as the Ancient Staff, Magic Dagger, and 100 Needles. They, they do drop at a low rate though, so you may have to grind through a few to pick up them. I grinded through about 20 and got three sets of 100 needles, not picked up an ancient staff or a magic dagger yet. Now if you do want to farm for King Orbling, you can do that by going into chapter two quest. Remember at the very start of that, three King Orblins spawn behind you and you can attack them and I think they drop at a 25% rate. So you can take the first two out pretty easily. And so you probably have to take four out to get one. Um, and you can do this again and again. Once you have beaten them, you don't have to complete the rest of chapter. Just leave, go back to the world map, um, click on another chapter. Then when it says quit, hit that. It will then take you to the character screen. Just back up and then you can select chapter two and do that and then you can keep farming for King Orblings. So once you've farmed your King Orblings, what you can then do is go to the upgrade section and you can merge your King Orblings together. Now what that does is it not only gives 5,000 experience to your King Orbling, which will help you level them up faster, but also if you look at the B section, which means the skill boost, you'll see it goes up from 15.2% to 20.2%. Now that's the percentage to which certain attacks will occur. So you see you've got Trance, Ultima, Magical Attack. You'll see those different abilities on your characters. And when that's at 100%, that means there will be a 100% chance that that skill will activate. At the moment, there's only a 20.2% chance. So as you fuse them together again and again, it'll keep going up 5%. So odds are that you will need 20 King Orblings to be able to get that up to 100%. And you can probably farm them, you know, spend a good two hours, you'll probably do that straight away. And you'll have a really strong King Orbling to take into um, raids and be able to take them down with a 100% chance that that magical attack plus 10% will activate. <laughs> <laughs>